Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, Yvonne Crayer, Lee Steimer, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Lee, Yvonne, and myself with the Realm of Beings eagerly invite you to join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Morning, good morning, listeners and everybody. Welcome to Shifting Impressions. I'm Yvonne, standing in for Lee during this introduction, and I am here today with my co-hostesses Greta and Lee. And of course, we are with the Realm of Beings as always, and we are on Transformation Talk Radio every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. And you can listen to us on all the various podcast platforms. The recordings are there. So please take a moment um, and uh, come on and shift your impressions. But uh, what we talk about on this show is um, we discuss the quotes that are downloaded from the realm of beings. And um, some of the things that come up are questions like, does everyone have a realm that supports them? And how does this realm of beings that we can't see that seem to be invisible, but we can sense if we're attuned to them, what do they do? How do they operate in our lives? And what messages are they coming through with at this time? Because it feels like we're in a huge uh, place of evolution and lessons to be learned. And how do we receive the guidance? Well, um, stay tuned because these conversations will help you examine your life and how you are responsible for creating your own reality. So today we're going to shift a few more impressions, hopefully, um, as we always do. I know this podcast has an effect on me. I am certain it has an effect on people that I know who listen every week consistently and who work uh, with some of our facilitators, including Greta here. Um, and every week we talk about quotes um, that, again, it's downloaded that come through Greta, through She's the Channel. And um, this today's quote is, um, there are two lessons that we all have. And one is to love and appreciate ourselves unconditionally. The other is to nullify the existence of separation in all ways. Ladies... Good morning. Good morning to all of you. And um, let's see what we have to say about this quote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any notes about it. Sometimes we spend time together making some comments. So this is everything we are doing this morning is going to be extemporaneous and going to be a transmission so it should be interesting so Greta you're up so let's see what you have to say first oh I love how you put me first okay <laughs> well, I guess I created that right you did uh, yes. <laughs> um those are two uh important things that we're getting ready to talk about today and that is loving ourselves unconditionally and separation. Those are two big lessons that everybody has in existence. So I'm not just talking about um, people or humanoids, those who belong to the humanoid group. I'm not just talking about them. I'm talking about everything in existence. So 
let's say on other planets, let's say um, in other universes, because we've talked about that there, there's more than one universe. Because why uh, constrict the force in its creation of reality? So we go into infinity with that. So we're going into infinity with those two lessons because everything in creation experiences that in some way or another. And we developed it to fit us as human beings. What does separation look like in this reality that we are existing in? What does unconditional love look like for us in this uh, reality experience that we are having? So that's in essence what we're looking at today. How does that, what does that look like? And we're forever uh, creating separation. So I'm gonna let, turn it back over to Yvonne and Lee and they can uh, tell us what kinds of um, separations do we have in this, in this reality that we're in. Everyone, uh, I think, I mean, I don't know, maybe everything in this 3D is about separation, right? Like we think our mind is separate from our body. We think our emotions are separate from our mind you know, our emotions inside of us, outside of us, you know, where are they? And I mean, those are huge. You know, we all see ourselves as like, you're Greta, I'm Lee and that's Yvonne, you know, that we're individuals and separate from each other. So that's like a hard, it's so sort of black and white here, but maybe that's the point of it, right? Maybe that's the point of this experience. Mm -hmm. And as best as we can to coming to appreciating ourselves, right? Like even if we can get to appreciating ourselves more than we generally mm -hmm. do, you know? And if that can lead to unconditional love, I mean, that seems so huge, that would be amazing, right? But small steps to just appreciation, I think would make this experience that much more fulfilling, right? Appreciating ourselves and appreciating all the people that are around us. Because as we've talked about on other podcasts, everything's for our good and everything's for our learning and evolution. So if we can kind of try to transition out of our separation and understand that and have a shift of impression, maybe, you know, that's a step in the right direction. I agree. I think um, that awareness of first our own body, our mind, our spirit, if you want to call it that, our emotions um, and how you know, like people do see themselves, especially in this world today that we're living in, you know, there's so much polarization and it's all over the media and whatnot and, and everywhere and our structures, but um, just stepping back and taking a pause every day. I know I, we talk about some tools sometimes on our show which could potentially help people, you know, activate these ideas a little more in their lives, like put them into play. And one of the things I do every day, which I've been doing it for about almost a year now, it's maybe two months shy of a year. And it's, um, it's a little journal, and it's already pre printed. And it's a, it's called like the five minute manifesting practice. And there's just like four questions on it. What am I grateful for? What am I manifesting? And then um, a few other questions. And I just feel like it takes less than five minutes usually, but that little process was is actually helping me personally bring out some of the things that I would like to create in my life and see more in my life. And the main 
piece of that, the first question is always about gratitude. And I, when I look back over the pages, I see it is for me anyway, all about love and joy and, you know, trying to build uh, more, um, you know, like intimate connected relationships with people that are in my life right now and that I bring into my life. Um, so yeah, that's my little opening take on this quote. So the separation, um, and I think both of you uh, talked about uh, it in that Yvonne talked about it in reference to uh, emotions, how we can separate ourselves by our emotions uh, from our true divinity. Uh, we can have a personal separation. It doesn't have to be a separation from a group of people. It can be a personal separation from ourselves in that if I don't love myself, I'm separating from my divinity because we are divine beings. And that's one thing we want to uh, emphasize here today is divinity. You are divine. So when you think of yourselves as less than that, then you have created separation from your true self. So that's why loving yourselves unconditionally is very important because it's a recognition of who you truly are, who you truly are when you're not in this physical body. Who are you really? You know, and we've talked about that every individual that's in this existence is a divine being and consequently is the force itself, which is a challenging, can be a challenging thing to see. And it can operate out of fear that you, you don't want to see it. Because then that means I am the fourth. I'm creating all of this. You know, I'm creating uh, uh, what, what's happening. Yes, you are. You're just not aware of it. Because we keep blinders on. So the blinders help us to stay in this reality that we're experiencing. You know, some people can travel outside of this reality. Some people create to get uh, bleed throughs from other realities, uh, which they then start to think it's past lives. But remember, there's no past so that there can be no past life. So it's what's the nowness. So staying in the nowness of unconditional love of self is very important. You're recognizing your true self. You don't have to beat up on yourself because that's separation, separation. It makes me think that sometimes people might be a little bit of afraid to recognize that they do have so much um, capability and power and sometimes they sabotage that you know because like you said they put blinders on or we put blinders on um so yeah it's always a, a process right of constant growth evolution and change so that as we learn one lesson other ones are presented with us so the force can experience itself um in another way right mm -hmm. And we are the force, so we're constantly in a state of uh, creation of reality. Mm -hmm. We're never out of that state. You know, people think that if I manifested a car, that's my creation of reality. Your creation of reality is going on at every moment. When you move your hand, I think we did this in one podcast, said so if you move your hand, that's a reality. It's like, I think the last time I held up my hand and I said, okay, if I hold up this finger, that's one reality. If I put the finger down, that's another reality. If I move two fingers up, that's a reality. If I move one finger, oh my goodness, let me not do that finger. Uh, 
<laughs> that middle finger is a powerful reality. <laughs> Very symbolic. Jacob will bleep us out for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a demo, listener. Yeah. <laughs> but every time we do something, it's it's a. Uh... <laughs> He's smiling. He's saying he gave us a chat. I got to tell everybody. He said no censoring here. So we're glad <laughs> about that. We're good to go. <laughs> but um, <laughs> oh Lord, I got to think about that one. All right. So, but you know, it's just it's it's we're doing it all the time. We're just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. So loving of ourselves. What does that do? What does it do when you love yourself? I'm gonna put that out to you two ladies. What does that do? Makes me feel good inside when I know I'm in a state of unconditional love. I feel good and I feel like anything's possible. And um every my life is just so my, you know, my uh job besides this, I don't consider the podcast a job. This is my fun time with all of you but I have a, a job in the other you know somewhere else uh, to earn some income but I just feel like everything flows and everything just moves effortlessly without any issues and people I talk to on the phone I'm connected with them and we're laughing even though it's business matters it's like nothing like again nothing you know nothing everything's possible nothing's impossible so that's pretty much what i feel how about you Lee? Feel, Lee? i would say that i don't know maybe i aspire to have unconditional love <laughs> um i don't want to make bold claims that i'm there because oh some of my creations certainly don't say that um but i think i agree with you when you're more, I mean, I like what you said earlier, Yvonne, even if it's just taking that five minutes to maybe focus your intensity on your thoughts or what you're creating instead of just doing things maybe haphazardly or by unconscious default. Um, but I think when I am more focused, you're right things or just feeling good, feeling better, things just seem to, without my, my trying, work out and show up. Like when you're in that love place, you create things automatically. Sometimes I think we get confused and we say it's serendipity or something like that or coincidence, but, um, no, I, I guess we're doing that. And it's kind of cool when you realize, oh, oh, this just didn't happen. I made it. So, oh, how do I get back there? <laughs> it's not always happening like that. So I move, I move in and out of like some kind of close to love <laughs> at the moment. You know, I, I think we all do. That's why I tell everybody, I said, if you get involved into a reality that you do not want and you go, oh my, why did I create this? Just be calm about it. Be peaceful about it. And then redo it. Now, how do you redo it? One of the ways that you can redo it, and I'm not going to go into the methods that we've, we've talked about here on, on the podcast again, but one of the things is to love self. It's okay. There are no mistakes. Everything is for a reason, you know, everything's for a reason. There are no mistakes. So we love ourselves through our mistakes. That's the unconditional part. Regardless of what I created, I'm going to accept that I created this and it's okay. That's, a, that's an important word. Oh. Okay. I think... That word mistake, Greta, like I just had a quick little thought, like sometimes people 
like if if their language their self-talk inside their head like and how they're programmed from like you know how we are all programmed from childhood like oops I made a mistake no big deal versus I am a mistake you know like there's a big difference there because the I am a mistake is like an internal view of like like the feelings of shame and like lack of self-worth which obviously leads into like complete lack of self-love and so if you're heavily if that's a heavy influence in your daily activities um I'm just gonna say you know chances are you'll be creating events in your life that support that you know that support that feeling of I'm a mistake I'm not worthy of money I'm not worthy of whatever a good job or this or that whatever people you know want to bring more into their lives but um yeah so that's kind of where I sometimes go I think about that like that was just a mistake and you know mostly everything is it's just just happens you know well it's not so much that it happens. Right. Okay. We'll go back there. Yeah. That yeah. we create it to happen. We create it to happen. You know, uh, we create it sometimes consciously and sometimes unconsciously. So what we're talking about day, today is for people to consciously tell themselves, you know, I love you. I think at one point along way back in the podcast, I talked about when I felt kind of low, you know, uh, in my spirit uh, and I felt lonely and I felt um, there's nobody there to help me. I'm by myself. You know, I created all of these little things. Then I told myself, look, Greta, let's, let's, let's not do that. You got to love yourself. You got to appreciate who you are. Because nobody can appreciate you, if you until you appreciate yourself, you know. So I would stand in my bathroom, facing my bathroom mirror, and I would tell myself, Greta, I love you, baby. <laughs> I love you. I would tell myself, I would look in my eyes, and I would say, I love you. And then... You know how some people say, I feel lonely. I wrap my arms around myself and hug myself, get myself going. I said, I love you, Greta. I love you. I really love you. Hugging myself. Because I said, let me not have to wait for somebody else to hug me. I'm going to hug me. I'm going to hug myself. I'm going to tell myself, I love you. You know, that's why we say to people, fall in love with yourself. Everybody's trying to fall in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, fall in love with you because that's the important thing. And when you love yourself, that is starting to change your realities, the realities that you don't want. You know, and people make it more difficult than it is. You know, that's well, how do you do that? You Man, all you got to do is say, look, I'm changing this. I don't want this. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's it. I don't want this anymore. I am changing my reality. And it's based on me loving me. That's what my whole newness about myself is. You know, I'm recognizing that I'm a lovable person. I'm recognizing that I am worthy of all that is blessing me in goodness, what I perceive to be goodness, because everybody's perception of goodness is different, right. you know, but I'm, I'm, you know, if we talked about goodness, each one of us, like even each one of us, even today has discussed a different aspect of, you know, love of self. And that, that separation, you know, yeah. I mean, I think that's a big, oops, sorry, Vaughn. That's a big step for people to make just to even stand in front of a mirror and treat 
you know, treat yourself or say the things to you that so many of us are wanting to hear from someone on the outside. You know, I mean, I make a, a request to everyone who might be listening or hear the podcast, you know, really do that. Stand in front of the mirror and look yourself in the eye and tell yourself that you are amazing and I love you and see how it feels. I mean, really see how it feels. Be present with yourself and see if you can do it. And it might feel uncomfortable and strange, but you have to start with you and really be there and see how it feels. And I promise it gets easier as yes. you practice. Practice does make perfect. Yep, it's good. We have reached the point in the podcast where we take our first break. When we return, the realm of beings will be joining us and they can weigh in on our quotation for the week. So you're listening to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Lee and that's Yvonne and Greta. And we'll be right back. Hello. Thank you for staying with us, listeners. Uh, We have reached the part in the podcast where the realm actually weighs in. So let's see what they have to tell us, share their wisdom this week. So realm, are you present? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're here. Okay. This week... We have been talking about the quotation. There are two lessons that we all have. One is to love and appreciate ourselves unconditionally. The other is to nullify the existence of separation in all of its ways. What do you have to say, especially about this nullify the existence of separation? It's humanoids in 3D. It's impossible. <laughs> um, that's a good... Uh... That's a good question. One one reason why we um, wrote that quote was that we wanted people to deal with that um, lesson. A lot of times people don't think about separation. You don't even think about it. You don't think if you are in a certain political view that you're separate from the other person who has an opposite view. I mean, that's how you see it. You see it separate. Whereas it's difficult to say, well, your view is my view and your view is, et cetera. You know, the the belief that we're all the same. And we all are. We're all the same. There's no separation, even in the lessons because that lesson of separation goes throughout all of existence, like you ladies were talking about. The species can look different. The cultural frameworks of each species can be different, but in their own way, they are learning separation. Now, why would the force want to even deal with that? Because it's an interesting puzzle. It's like playing chess. What moves are you going to make to win when you're playing chess? What pieces do I move around to win the game? So the game is separation. What pieces do I move around for me to win outside of separation? So outside of separation is oneness. So how do I win oneness in this chess game? Now there's a lot to oneness and there's no way that we can discuss that with you all in the 30 or 20 minutes that we have 
in order to talk to you all. But it's the beginning of something. Just to see yourself one with anyone is beginning to nullify separation. It's just that moving, I'm trying to think of how to explain this to you. It's like, if I am belonging to the uh, far right politically, I am going to be in connection with others who believe in the far right. So between myself and the others who share my belief system, we are in a state of oneness. However, when I create to introduce myself to someone who is the opposite of me, then I am upset because you don't believe the way I believe. You don't practice what I practice. It's the same in religions with some people, not all, but with some. My religion is different. My belief system is the way to heaven or nirvana. It's that my way is the way. So come and be with me, you see. So there is no evil, there's no bad. There's only choice and there's only perception. So when you perceive yourself to be separate, then you are creating separation and you're coming outside of yourselves, your true nature. So your true nature is oneness. That's how you started. You started at oneness, at a state of oneness, at an understanding of oneness, in oneness operating in oneness. Then you decided, well, I'm getting a little bored. Let me take on something more interesting. So then you jump over and you decide to be, you have a humanoid ex experience because then you've got to deal with bringing yourself back to the oneness. So that's the journey. It's like the ultimate loop. Almost. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, all of that is the force and an experience, but then in order to evolve, it has to separate. So that's what I'm saying as a human, because we're here, because we chose this, because we wanted to experience this, like, can we ever actually transcend it? I mean, I guess maybe we have to at a point because that's like spiraling up the loop, but I think it's, it might be a long road. <laughs> <laughs> this point in our consciousness. Not necessarily. But it doesn't Not have to be. Because when you go through, uh, when you decide that you're going to make your transition, which is your decision, and how you're going to make your uh, transition, which is also your decision, when you've gone through that process of which transitioning for those of you who might not know how we're using that, we're using that as dying, okay? So when you use that process, you're leaving this because you are ready now to deal with your challenges at a different level at a different level, in a different reality that is going to create, and not it, but you will create the experiences to assist you in 
coming back to the one. So, and, and so you uh, are making your transition several times. You just don't realize it. You don't realize that you've been in this journey for a while because you have on what you ladies talked about earlier, blinders. So you don't see everything. You stay within your little minuscule perception of your life. You stay within that little framework. So that in that little framework, it is so huge, so, but I'm only using little to help you understand that it's different from the vastness. So in that reality you have, and you move into another reality, then you're understanding more. You're coming more and more and more to return to the understanding that, whoa, I am the force. And it's okay that I went through these things. This was the adventure. This is an adventure. People take all of this so seriously. Well, of course, I mean, realm, see? <laughs> A Freudian slip, as they would say. Uh, you know, what? It, how do we expand the blinders? How do we like expand our perception? Well, anybody who's listening to this podcast is in that process of expansion. Or if they're listening, if they're going to church every Sunday, or they're going to mosque, or they're going uh, to the temple, however, they receive words about existence and they do a little expansion. We do it little by little. If we did it big by big, oh my goodness, you wouldn't be able to stand it. Be too much for you. So it's just slowly, slowly understanding love of self and your oneness because you're going back, not back, I shouldn't say that. You're going deep into yourself, which is deep into the oneness. See, you're the force, you just don't even realize it. Some people even go to the extent of saying that's blasphemous. You're blaspheming because they, they, they can't deal with the fact that they're the creator of everything. That's too much. I can't be. You know, some people would say I can hardly, uh, I'm dealing, I'm having a challenge uh, creating this life let alone creating everything in existence. But we do. And we go through every, see, this is the interesting thing. You go through everything with everybody at every moment. But you keep the blinders on. So you think it's just you. If somebody is, uh, laying has has won the lottery everybody says oh that person won the lottery but if i take off my blinders we all won the lottery why because we're all one there is no separation so everything that every individual in existence is going through, you are experiencing right where you are now. It's the blinders that help you not to realize that. That's the beginning of oneness. That's beginning of the deterioration of this thing called separation. separation, which has life. It has a matrix of itself. The oneness does too. And we are that oneness. But we've got to say, okay, separation, you step aside now. 
step aside. I'm one with this boss that consciously I can't stand. Hmm. Or I'm one with my cousin who I feel hates my guts. Because when we were children, I took her uh, fire engine away and threw it in the garbage. Okay. So I'm separating myself. Some of us even hold all those events, all those events of separation, and you turn them into angst uh, in the forms of anger. Then you affect your liver, and then you wonder why you're not feeling well. You see, everything is connected. Everything is really connected when you think about it. Everything is connected. So you really, and, and some people, I'm lonely. I have no friends. My goodness, if you knew how that, that you were so connected, you could never say I'm lonely. You have so many things connected to you as you are connected to them that you can hardly believe it. But we have the blinders. The blinders make us feel the way we feel. The blinders make us feel that we're no good. The blinders make us feel there's no way I can make it today. The blinders help you with that. Because that was part, if we look at this as a game, and the game is to reach on the board the section called oneness. <laughs> and you have all these things all around the board. You have a pathway on the board that says joy and peace. You have pathways on the board that say angst, illness, debilitation, lack of self-love, lack of love of others, peace, joy, and we throw the dice. But then when we throw the dice, we're not throwing the dice by chance. We're throwing the dice on purpose. Because on purpose, I've decided I want to reach oneness by going by way of joy. Another player on the board will say, hmm, I think I can get to oneness faster if I, uh, I'm going to throw the dice so I have the number of spaces that are going to uh, help me reach anger. Because... That, that, I think that will help me get to the goal faster than you getting to the goal by way of going by joy. That's all this is. And you're throwing it out on purpose. The dice go out on purpose. How many spaces do I want? I want that space. So I'm going to throw out and I'm going to get the number three. Oh, I don't want number three. I wouldn't want to touch number three with a 10 foot pole. So I'm going to throw my dice out and I'm going to get a 10. And I'm moving to 10. You can stay at three if you want to, but I'm going to 10. You know, that's your decision making. What decisions are you going to make that bring you into the oneness? You see, into the oneness where everything that is there only is. There's only an isness. So you don't have to think of it in terms of angst. You know, think of it in terms of throwing the dice out. I want a new job. I'm gonna throw the dice out to get me a new job. And I'm gonna, or I'm gonna throw the dice out that the supervisor leaves and I get to stay, you see. So you're creating all these realities, but your destination is the oneness. That is the destination. 
yeah. Choose not to go there right now or ever. That's okay, too. Yes, it is. Because eventually you're going to get there. Because it's whatever not, path, whatever yes. path you're creating for yourself is yes. yours and however you get there or if you don't get there, like we've said before, it's just about the experience of the path. Yes. Yes. What do you do? What do you do you get to jump over certain things on the on the board, on the game board? I'm gonna jump over pain. I don't want to experience that. I'm gonna jump past that. I'm gonna to jump to the square that says perfect health. That's where I'm jumping. Or another person will say, uh, at the end, all of this is at the unconscious level, of course. Uh, another person will, will say, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to experience hurting my foot and being on crutches for six months. You know, while my foot repairs, everything's a choice. Everything, everything you do is a choice. Everything is a square on the game board of reaching oneness. And everything that is on the game board that takes you away from that in your own conscious awareness, you know, because see, everything leads to the one. Everything leads to the one because it's not the experience of it. It's what you get out of the experience. See, some people look at the experience. It's what you get out of the experience that moves you across the game board. Because when you experience joy and what humanoids e express joy as being, then um, you're going to seek some more of it. Mm. If you have happiness, you're going to seek some more of it. When you land on the square that says unconditional love, and you understand what that unconditional love is, and, and you throw the dice, I want to I wanna go to uh, more loving myself. You can go to that square too. More, where I love myself even more than I was in the square before me. I can just travel down that path if I want to. Or I can travel down the path where I am every time I turn around. I'll say something is always happening to me. Nothing is ever working for me. So on that game board, you're going to stay there. Every, every time you throw the dice, it's going to send you to an expression of everything is never, there's nothing working for me. So you're going to get more uh, game squares that look like that. But that's okay. Because even that path is traveling to the one. Because eventually you'll get tired of that path that's You'll a more challenging yeah bored with the game yeah yeah such a powerful uh, metaphor or example of what we're talking about what we this quote is about and what we talk about on the podcast is the idea of life as a game and you know rolling the dice is a choice and all those squares are all choices that we have to move or not to move, to stay, to attract more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But note, we want to emphasize everybody's winning. <laughs> Everybody wins the game. That's great. That's it's a great just way to conclude. I love that. Yeah. There's no competition. Usually in a game you do have, I want to win the game, but it's funny. There's a game, actually a board game 
that I played as a kid. It was called the game of life. And you got, there was a little dial on it and everybody got a vehicle and a path. It's kind of the same idea of what you're talking about. And in the end, everybody was a winner. You know, it was just, you end up as whatever you are, like a doctor or teacher or nurse or some business person, but accounting and but you're all, everybody's happy at the end. It's it's a nice game for kids to play. Yeah, yeah. And we're playing it in real life. Right. The quote unquote, real life. <laughs> we this put experience. real, yes. We put this real when we say that in quotes because we create all these illusions. That right. game board is an illusion. Well, we thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. We are coming to the end of another podcast of Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. Thank you, Realm. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Greta, for chatting today. Listeners, thank you for listening. And until we create each other again, this has been Shifting Impressions. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with Lee, Yvonne, the Realm, and me, Greta, each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all. So begin to create the realities you want. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.